Bet. Let's get into it. Bop, bop, bop. I know using gun sounds probably not the most biblical, but if you remember that Jesus is King, Jesus is Lord, and he died on the cross and was three days later, and you got a relationship with him, and you're working on them convictions, you're doing better than most. All better right, most. I can't <laughs> lie, we got a we got a special guest. Introduce yourself for us. What's up, everybody? Uh, super glad to be here, man. Kevin K got me out. Uh, my name is KC. I'm a Christian artist, Christian rap artist, and I'm super thankful to be here. Let's get this conviction relationship yeah, started. Yeah. yeah, I didn't even. I forgot to talk about like my intro. Forgot to warn you about the intro, but no, like... I had seen it. I had seen it with the Dela Cruz intro uh, when you had did it, so I was ready for the. Bow, bow, bow. <laughs> I was ready. You know, that's funny is uh, Ruslan commented on one of my older videos. Uh, he said, intro is legendary. And I was like, you know what? That's the stamp I needed. I feel, that's it. I, I, feel good to do, I feel good to do this every single time now. So like <laughs> having Ruslan do that is definitely top tier stamp yeah. of approval. Legendary, bro. bro. That's like the the guy who really be who really pushed this, to be honest. No, facts. The person like, that really started like this podcasting joint for Christians and even making it just normal. To have a platform. Making it normal to be a Christian. Yeah. Like exactly. on, on camera. Like, yeah. Shout out. Shout out Ruslan, man. Shout out Ruslan. Shout out Ruslan for that. No so, doubt. Casey, we got you here. And uh, before we get in, we're going to go back to back to the beginnings, kind of like we did on the De La Cruz one. I really want to start off with, where are you from? Where are you from? Um, I was born in New York, but moved okay. here because my parents are pastors. So God told us to move from mm. New York. We got that PK. That PK. Okay. That PK. Okay. okay. That... Now, okay, I can see the connection now, the PK, all see right. See the connection, yeah, my parents, uh, they actually have their own church now, which I'm actually a part of, do ministry there, but uh, mm -hmm. back in 1999, because I'm old, God had called us um, to leave New York, leave our family, sell everything that we had. We had never even been to Georgia before, we had never visited, nothing, um, and he said, sell everything and leave your family, leave everybody you know. And moved down to a place called Columbus, Georgia. And that is where God has called us. And that's where we're at now. So been here yeah. since 99. Whoa, shout out Columbus. And wait, so wow. Now, now, what denomination are, are they not a denomination? Non denom what, what yeah, type they're of not, they're non denomination. Non but, okay, okay. They, but definitely like I we always make jokes because people are like, Are y'all non denominational? And my dad goes, We just love Jesus. Like we're mm, Christians that amen. just love Jesus. No, and, you know, it doesn't yeah. matter about the denomination. It yep. matters about your relationship with Christ. And so we're just Christians who love Jesus. And, and people get caught up in the, in like, what denomination and what do you, or what are you for? What are you for against? Like, man, if you're for Jesus, man, that's where we're at. Like, that's it. That's really where we're at with it. Exactly. Um, That's actually awesome. Wow. So y'all just sold everything and moved out. There. Like literally sold everything and moved down here with like $300 or $400 in our pocket. And like, when I wow. tell you it was struggle bus for like the first three, four years, like, my dad didn't have a job. We were we got evicted. Um, it was definitely like a whole lot of trust stuff. Like it was like yeah. my dad didn't know like how to feed us. Like it was just crazy. And then God had told them he was like, yeah. in order for you to gain it all, you have to give it all up. And so like oh, they shoot. gave up everything, moved out in faith to follow Jesus. You know what I'm saying? So um, I think it's just like a testimony and testament of like my parents' faith and trust in the Lord. And then now. Like my parents make great money. My dad makes great money. Mm. He's pastoring. His like he has his own church. He's had his own church since two thousand seven. God's really been moving. We have like over a hundred or so members, and just like that's awesome. I'm Whoa. thankful to be a part. I'm on the leadership team. Like I do ministry there. I teach. Um, I play the drums for my church. Like I'm just super oh musically gifted too. Hold musically on. gifted, not just, man. not just not just rapping. Okay, Hold not just on. rapping. I play I play the drums and just um. Just super thankful to be a part of the ministry that God has us doing there and um to see the growth uh in my life and in my family's life. It's awesome, man. Yeah, so wow, that's actually crazy. So first off, and that has to build character too, and like your parents are setting the stone of how you're supposed to live. Like mm -hmm. I, I always talk about that for me. Like it helped me see what I'm supposed to do, but also yeah. seeing them go through the hard times, like you said, being evicted. Yeah. Like, whoa, that's that's how like, did yeah. how did that how did you deal with that growing up? Like, did that ever cause stumbling blocks, or was it like encouraging? How do you normally deal with that? I think I think for me, like 
being like five and six at the time, like not really knowing like mm-hmm. much about it, but the stories being told over and over again and letting us know, like, I think for kids, like this Bible says, train up a child in the way they should go. So when they're older, they won't depart from it. So like train us up to let us know, like, hey, look, as your parents, we went through some of the hardest times that people will ever have to go through. We've been evicted. We've had to leave our family. We've had to leave our homes. Um, We've been with no money and God's provided for us every single step of the way. So like instilling in us, like no matter what you go through, no matter what experiences you have, God is going to provide for you every single step of the way if you continue to trust him and have faith in him. So I think those are like the things that have been instilled with us, like in me and my five brothers and sisters that we've been able to Ah. continue stepping upon. Yeah. You got a big family too. Hey, my parents took be fruitful and multiply to the next level. Yeah. yeah, Not playing no games. Man, that's that's actually lit. I've been thinking about it. I was like, man, if I once I get a wife, man, I want like eleven. I want a whole football squad. I want (laughs) I want want offense and defense. I've been thinking, nah, I'm just playing. I'm wild. No, but uh gotta make sure it's okay with her first, right? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. He's gotta gotta go through the childbirth. (laughs) And we got to find this lady, too, though. So, hold on. Like, that's hey, another issue. All right. Anyway. Tell me. I feel you. I feel you. I'm 27 <laughs> and still waiting on my shoddy love. So, I feel you. Okay. But you're waiting. Yeah. <laughs> like, you waiting on his will. Like, his time. patient. Not rushing nothing. Because mm. you can only marry one. You can only marry one. So, you got to make sure it is the right one that God has called for you. Because so many people just get into relationships and get married because they're burning with desire. And then, in the end, they find out, dang, like, I just jumped into this and I wasn't even ready. I don't even like really know yeah. this person on a spiritual, emotional, you know, physical level. You know what I'm saying? Just no, literally. Ready to just jump into it because you're physically attracted and you're like, you're burning with lust. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you're yeah. Not like, ready to actually. So dive common. Yourself. So common. Yeah. So common. Like, exactly. And, and, and out here, it's a, uh, they call, you know, ring by spring. You know, they all get, they all get married. Uh, they all get married around this time. <laughs> Because you're and at a I, Christian school, right? It's a Christian school. I encourage it. I like so it. You I know, like it. I always hear the jokes that kids at Christian schools be ready to get married in like three months. ASAP. ASAP. Rock. You can't lie. And uh, But really, like, the thing is, though, I like, I, I seen it work. It does work. Because, mm. like, they grow together. Yes. But it then does. also, I'm like, man, there, there's been some situations where I'm looking and I'm like, Wow, I'm nervous for you, fam. But I know God's got you. I know God's got you. Like, I know if anyone's got you, it's him. You know what I'm saying? Jesus, so, yeah, facts. But it's just like, man, I'm like, wow, bro. I was just with you when you met her. <laughs> now, you know what I'm saying? Like, now you're engaged? What's now going you're engaged? on? Like, but it's also like, man, I want that. Same. Like, how long will it take me? Yeah, facts. Because, I mean, if we're waiting so patiently and the moment we see that one, are we gonna be quick to make? You know what I'm saying? I think we might. You know who knows? Like for us. Yeah, right? I think it, I think it depends on you and the person. I I know for myself. Like if I know that this is who God has for me, then I'm not gonna be wanting to be engaged for two years. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm like, that's what I'm saying. That, like that's that's just prolonging. I don't think that's healthy it, either. Two two years. Yeah, because maybe you're around that person but sexually, like, you're gonna be like. Yeah, like temptations would be tough. Like. She looking good. No, 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 like actually though, like you really like that's your best friend too. Like that's what yeah. want. like you know what I mean. Like yeah, and yeah, she that. she has needs just like you. So like she might be like shoot, like he looking really good today. We can <laughs> you know and just one just one thing of like kissing, kissing leads to touching. It really in. goes. Next, it really goes some more. It really it, does. it goes it's some really more. So to, it's like you want to be careful. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Don't don't play with fire. You know unless you want to get burned. No, no, <laughs> like then as a PK, that you a PK. I know you a PK. That's that's another. That's something your your dad and your reverend, who's the same thing, is telling you. <laughs> like, facts, facts, <laughs> facts. The same exact thing. So, so you said you had five siblings. Mm-hmm. Five other siblings. Five other where siblings. Where are you? Where are you in this list? I'm the oldest, so it goes boy. Oh shoot! Yeah, you big bro. Oh my goodness. I'm big bro, but it's for one little brother. But <laughs> five five. Oh my goodness. There's four of us boys and two girls. It's like boy, 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 girl, girl, boy. And my oh, parents dude. my parents had like each of us pretty much like a year and a half apart too. Cause the oh. youngest one just turned 18. So he's nine years younger than me. So 
Okay. Yeah, my parents is no jokes. It's and no you were game. born in ninety six. He was born okay. in 05. So. Okay, okay. Yeah, I'm 03. So Okay, I'm like, so you're like 03. Okay. Years, I'm like two years older than him, really three okay. maybe. Yeah, you're um, a baby too. Um yeah, I'm a young. I just turned twenty one in January. Okay, twenty one, yeah. yes sir. Twenty one, twenty one. Nah, <laughs> you know. I did just turn twenty one, yeah. Man. It's like when I was wilding back in the day, I used to wait for this. Now I'm like, man, it's like I'm not even on that timing anymore. Not I'm just on happy. That time. It's just I'm another just happy day. To be here. It really was like. Yeah. <laughs> so okay, five siblings. Do you feel like you have to set the standard for your for your little your little siblings? Um, what's so crazy is people see us and they don't think I'm the oldest because I have like a young face. Yeah. So they think that a lot of them, a lot of people still even think like to this day, like I'm like 21, 22. Um, you don't look to you said 27 27 you don't look 27 bro. i think it's just the way i carry myself like my yeah, energy yeah. is like so youth like, pastor vibes right here yeah. i can't <laughs> lie i got i'm getting youth pastor in a compliment way in a good way like not in a bad oh, yeah, way facts, like, facts. i can feel youth pastor just right here the whole time <laughs> i wish i had this as a youth pastor i can't lie i really do <laughs> so yeah man it's just um, yeah, I mean, you set the standard because yeah. whatever school I chose, my siblings would have to go to that same school. So whatever school I chose, they would have to go to that school. Um, whatever they saw me do, like I was always the example. Like if I got in trouble, they would know what not to do. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, and I don't know. That on top of that, being the oldest, it helped me be cool. Like with all of them, I had different ways of being mm. cool with all my siblings. Like some of them we could talk more deep about stuff. You know what I'm saying? Some of them, we could we could hang out and joke around more. You know what I'm saying? It was just yeah. different ways of being close and cool with them. You know what I'm yeah, saying? That just, you know, yeah. some people might not be able to have because they don't have such as big of a family, you know? It built your, like, relational skills, yeah. Yeah, I, I can see it that. honestly did. Yeah, I can see that, too. Um, Yeah, I can, and you, you're not going to talk to your... 18 year old brother like you're gonna talk to your 15 year old brother like yeah they're just going through different things in life or your sister too that's a whole nother thing like that's just a whole nother thing yeah whole like thing. and sometimes your sister probably more mature i don't know how that works really i never had a sister but like <laughs> i feel like girls are just way more mature than a lot of the guys they like, are they you know are they are like, i'm still trying to mature i'm like wow like i can't like so like i actually do think that so okay drums when did you learn the drums was that later or early What's so crazy is I've been playing the drums since I've been ten months. Uh, ten months. Oh, there old. it is. So it is music was in in your blood early. In the blood early. Parents do any instruments? Uh, no, no. And it's it, it's just it's honestly my dad even said to this day he was like you've been gifted to play the drums. Like mm -hmm. I don't take any. I've never taken lessons. I've never, Yo, what? Never oh, watched YouTube. Not never watched YouTube to like actually play. Or anything like that. I just, just honestly the pick it up by ear. I hear something once, and I'm like, I'm gonna try that. And I whoa, try it to the whoa, best, whoa, whoa. and it honestly sounds really good. And I'm not even like trying to brag on myself or anything, but like whoa. I've been just anointed to play the drums. Like I've had a lot of people, like I probably like probably like over hundreds of people tell me like, yo, you you've blessed me today. Just on that drum set, I could just drum feel the anointing on you and stuff. So. It's it's definitely God. It's definitely a blessing. Okay, now I gotta ask this question: Were you playing the drum? You're play so now you play the drums in the church. Is that is that what's happening? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So were you? What age did you start doing that? And what's so funny is me and my family were just talking about this, right? So I've been playing in the church since I've been thirteen. Our drummer oh. that we had um, at the time, I was just playing the bongos, right? And our drummer at the time, one day he just was like. I'm not coming anymore. Like I'm not coming to church. Which anymore. happens. That happens and in the church. Which yeah. it happens all the time because yeah. there are a lot of people that like play instruments and they don't even like go to the church. They go there because there's just a need that you know they need that. Yeah, happens all the time. Um, and they were like, "You got to play tomorrow." And I was like, "Yo, I haven't picked up sticks really, like to actually play in like <laughs> ten years. You know, since I've been like three or four, like I haven't actually like played play in like ten years because I used to play basketball. So like everything in me was like just Hoops, hoops, hoops. Ooh, ooh, bucket, and then, okay. Yeah, straight buckets. And then, yeah. <laughs> and then I picked them up, and I haven't put them down since. And, like, I used to hate the drums. I hated them. I hated playing them um, because, like, part of my testimony is, like, I wasn't even living for God for a good grip of my life from, like, the age of, like, 
13 to like 18, I really stopped living for the Lord at that time. So, like, I was a huge hypocrite. I'd be going to church, like, you know, Sunday and PK, Wednesday. The PK, and the PK. PK, the straight, yeah. the straight PK. And yeah. then I hated it. And then once I rededicated my life back to Christ, it was like God was like, he took off all the hate that I had for the drums and the hate that I had for my parents who had, like, forced me onto the drums because that was, like, another issue. I felt like I was forced to play. Um, and I didn't, like, want to play. I was in this position because they put me in it. Yeah. Um, and then, like, once I got all of that flesh and all that stuff off and then, like, just allow God to move through me, then, like, God really started, like, moving through me to, like, touch other people and, like, really bless them. So wow. I look at it as a miracle for sure. When did you become saved? What what age would you say? So you want me to get the short testimony? You, you get Just go. Just start going. Any And whenever, man. You can go as long as you want, bro. <laughs> Um, so of course, PK grew up in the church. Our family moved down here to Columbus when I was four years old. Uh, we were at church and I felt the Lord just call me to the front of the church we were at. And I felt on my heart. I went up in front of like 150 people and they were like, why are you up here? And I was like, God just called me. I just felt during the service, like I need to give my heart to the Lord and I need to get right with God and I need to be pure. What age? What age? Sorry. I missed it. Might've missed it. What age is this? Is this right now? Huh? What age is this right now? My bad. Four. Oh, this is four. No, you're good. My bad. My bad. My bad. No, you're good. You're good. I'm just trying to make sure. I'm trying to. I'm trying to envision this right now. Like, yeah. Okay. So four years old, I go out there, boom, um, give my heart to the Lord, everything. Then for like all of elementary, pretty much all of middle school, I'm like on fire for Jesus. I'm like praying over kids. Um, our family, like growing up, our family didn't like allow us to watch certain shows. So, like I never was like Same. allowed to watch yeah. Disney. Cartoon yeah. Network, all that stuff. And so, like, kids would be like, did you see the latest episode? And I was like, y'all need to start talking about Jesus, talk, be <laughs> saved from hellfire. Street like, evangelism right there. Just yeah, they're like, right there. They're like, repent, 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 <laughs> repent. I'm like, y'all not understand. Jesus could come back tomorrow. Are you ready? And they're like, dude, we're 11. Chill. <laughs> Chill. <laughs> and I'm like, hey, no, you felt the urgency. Know. You felt the urgency. Yeah, exactly. And I'm like, but I don't want y'all to go to hell. Blah, blah, yeah, blah. yeah. We get to middle school. Middle school, that's when um I started like finding out stuff about like life. I started finding out about like curse words, secular music, yeah. um, like everything. So like it was like my parents could protect me for sure. But when I'm at school, they're not there to protect me. So I'm finding out all this stuff and I'm having this inner fight between like who I want to be. Do I want to be a Christian or do I want to be like my friends? Because it seems like nobody is saved at the school I go to. Because I go to public school, so it's not even a Christian school. Okay, um, okay. Even, even Christian schools, you got to be careful too because those kids be wild too. Um, I went to that, so I know what you're talking about. I know exactly <laughs> what you're talking about. <laughs> so we get to ninth grade. Everything's still going good. I'm still debating. I'm still on the fence, but I'm still pretty much rocking with God, right? I'm like 14, yeah. 15, still rocking with God. My 10th grade year, we had a youth leader at my church, right? Um, known her for years since I was like five years old, right? Uh, we would visit her house, spend the night. She would come over. Her kids would come stay the night with us. Like we were just, we were all close and everything. Um, and so when I had turned 16, uh, she sexually molested me, right? Oh, wow. True story. Um, and so I had seen pornography before i had been aware of like you know that stuff but i wasn't aware of like what sex and like for any of that was yeah Yeah. like like being touched and stuff like i wasn't really aware of that and so like when that happened i was like it was like my eyes were open i was like oh my gosh like this is like what this type of stuff feels like but at the same time i was like Yo, like she just took advantage of me, you know? What yeah, I'm saying? yeah, yeah. At sixteen position. too. 16? Yeah, at sixteen. Yeah, that's you know a crazy time. And, too. and she's married, you know what I'm saying? And mm. she's like our leader at church, so it's like a lot so like, of complications. A lot, lot of complications. complications. And so that. when that happened, I was so mad at God because I was like, God, if you were real, if you love me, you would have saved me from this. Now I'm yeah, all confused. Yeah. Now I'm like feeling all sexual in my mind and stuff. I have these images that I can't get out. Blah blah blah, and so like after that, I was like, "Bump God, I'm done." Like I'm just no, gonna yeah. like I was already on the fence, and in that moment, just like oh. they pushed you over so that side, just put me yeah. over the edge. So then I start. I was like, you know what? Since she messed with me and took advantage of me, I'm gonna start taking advantage of girls. So that's what I did. I started going wild on girls. So any girl I could get like a chance to, I would just be going crazy or whatever. 
And then my junior year of high school, I'm getting really popular at school. I'm playing on the basketball team. I'm on the varsity basketball team. I'm getting great tick. I'm scoring a bunch of buckets. Like, I'm averaging, like, 11 points a game off the bench. So, like, I'm doing, like, work or whatever, right? So, like, I'm hooping. Uh, I got a girl, blah, blah, blah. So then, like I said, I was taking advantage of girls. There was a girl at our church that was coming to church or whatever. One day at the church, I got caught messing around with her, right, in the parking wow. lot. At church, right? Crazy stuff. Wow. I know. Bro. But you know you know how a guy's mind thinks. Anytime an opportunity is offered, your mind is like, yeah. you no, don't literally, see nothing else. I can see that. You don't see nothing else. You don't see warnings. You don't see this could be dangerous. I could get in trouble. All you see is, right? Um, so we get in trouble, boom. So my dad took me off the basketball team. He took all my clothes. Um, he took like took everything from me, right? I could only wear one pair of shoes every single day to school for the rest of the year. And this was like in January. So from January to May, I only could wear one pair of shoes uh, with every outfit. So it was like terrible. He took my phone, sold my phone, couldn't see my friends, nothing like that. So when I was like in my isolation, a uh, homegirl of mine, she had like gave me an iPod so I could like keep up with people like using like message or whatever, right? Um, because you can still message people through the iPhone. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. The email, yeah, the email. That's what I was doing. Sorry, there's a lot of noise going on. I'm still. No, focused you're good. On this. You're good. You're good. And so, in that moment, in that isolation, I got addicted to pornography. So like yeah. it was like an everyday thing. Nobody was around. I was literally always in trouble. So I would go straight to my room. Nobody in my family could really talk to me. I was just really like just by myself. And so in that isolation, I just got addicted to pornography. Then five months go by. It's my senior year of high school. I get my license. I got, well, I have my license. I get a car. So I'm like, it's my senior year. I'm going to go buck wild, right? So I'm going <laughs> crazy. So I go back. I got a job. I had got money, got a phone again. So I'm talking to the shoddies. And then I started smoking weed. So, right, I'm addicted to gas now. So, and I'm addicted to three things. Too. I'm on gas. Which is how I'm it normally to... goes. It's all at once. It's all not at like once. it's either one, you know, it's never just picking sometimes. It's all of them at once. I can see that. Every single thing. So, I'm on gas. I'm on pornography. I'm messing around with shoddies. And I'm, like, partying, too. So, like, I'm just enjoying my life, right? And all the while, I'm still going to church on Sunday and Wednesdays, right? Still playing the drums. You have to, though, as a PK. Have to. Like, have that's to that's PK. the issue. Yeah. That's the issue. And the whole time, I'm trying to keep my secret life secret. And I'm mm. trying to, I'm telling people, like, man, God deliver, can deliver you. God loves you. He wants to free you. And this whole time, you're in bondage. Monday through Saturday. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, yeah. Uh, like you're in bondage while telling people yeah. you can be free from the bondage. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I'm just that. going stupid. Um, and so that whole thing went through my whole senior year. Um, I got so popular. I went prom king. Like, I'm, like, the most mm. popular kid at the school. Like, it's just crazy stuff. Um, and then I had a couple of incidents happen where a couple of girls I was talking to really did me dirty. Um, mm. And it was kind of like payback for everything I had did. I, they had no, got for me real, back. I feel that. I feel that. They, I feel that. I feel that. They got me back. One Reap of the what you sow. Really, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Read what you sow. Yeah. One of the girls I really like, she uh, ended up cheating on me with my best friend. That mm. hurt a lot, you know what I'm saying? Then, and I already have trust issues with women because of what happened. Of what happened so it was yeah. like, so it was like doom. Then another one, she cheated on me with seven of my friends. Crazy story, but like she was wild and stuff, just wild and stuff. Um, so yeah, so like I get heavy into like smoking. So I'm smoking like twice or three times every single day, and just like I'm just I'm just out of it. You know, what trying I'm to saying? deal with that pain. That's how you trying to deal with the pain. That's how you dealt with that numb. pain with more pain. More pain, exactly. Um. Yeah. So then it's the day before my freshman year of college. This is back in 2015. Never forget. And we go and we watch the movie Straight Outta Compton. Have you seen it? Yeah, I've seen it. I've seen Straight Outta Compton. Yeah. Seen Straight Outta Compton. I mean, no, I, I haven't. Don't I, I don't have recommend. I don't recommend <laughs> anyone watching it. I don't recommend yeah, watching no, it. Yeah. Every yeah. time I tell the story, I gotta make sure I give a disclaimer. Don't yeah. watch the movie. Don't watch what? Straight Outta Compton. Don't watch. Yeah. It. Don't watch it. We do not support Straight Outta Compton. Do not support it. Uh, <laughs> there's just some stuff in there that just yeah. Shout out so, Compton, um, but not straight out of Compton, the movie. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> so, yeah, we go and we watch the movie. Um, I had never really even heard of the story of NWA. So, like, I'm yeah. like, for me, this is, like, different. We get to the end of the movie and, like, Easy e dies, you know, like, in real yeah. life because yeah, of AIDS, yeah. right? Boom. And I'm, like, looking. It's, like, died at, like, 24, 25 or whatever. He and did it, die young, yeah. it freaked me out. I was like, oh, my gosh. I'm going to go home tonight. 
I said, what if something happened to me tonight? What if mm. I died? Where would I go? Would I go to heaven or would I go to hell? And I was like, yo, I would go to hell. Like the life I live, I have not lived for Christ. And so on my ride, ride back. How old are you at this time? 18. I had 18, okay, 18, 18 about six months ago. You. Sorry, I'm still trying yeah, to envision. No, no, no. You're good. You're good. Yeah. Yeah. I get back to my I get back to my um to my house and I just like got on my bed and I just cried out. And I was like, God, I don't want to go into college not living for you. Mm. I don't want to go tomorrow and start off college the way that I've been living in high school. I want to dedicate my life to you now and I want to truly live for you. I don't want to be a hypocrite. I want to really live for you. And um yeah, after that, I just started, like, just Amen. changing my life just slowly and surely. Like, was there some stuff I still dealt with? Yeah, like, it felt yeah, like well, everything was easy happened. to give up, except for pornography, right? Except for sexual lust and stuff. Like, it was like, like, weed, I smoked maybe, like, three more times after giving my heart to God, and I've been, like, eight years sober. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, man, Yo, yo, like, shout out to that, bro. Shout awesome out to that. stuff, yeah. So it's, no, like, awesome stuff. That. But it was, like, every once in a while... You know, a girl would hit me back up that I hadn't seen since high school. And that uh, heartbreak, that heartbreak. A pornography, pornography video would come up in my mind, and I'd be like, ah, I kind of, boom. So then realizing that I had to be accountable for my actions. I think that was a big, mm, a big thing okay. that a lot of Christians okay. struggle with. I um, like this. I like where this is going right here. Realizing that I had to be accountable um, because there are people that are at my church, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Leader, you're a leader. Example. And so I got accountability. I got brothers in Christ. I talked to my dad about it. And I said, look, PK, because that's what I call my dad. We call him Pastor Katori. That's what we call him. Uh, I was like, PK, I was like, yo, dad, like PK, like I'm struggling with lust and I want to be free from it. I need to be held accountable. And so um, I started getting stuff on my phone that wow. would keep them updated, accountability. Um, it was kind of like covenant eyes so they could see everything that like I went through on my phone, same thing with my computer. Um, and slowly but surely, a lot of those addictions started to break. And like now, I'm able to use that in my music because I've been delivered from it. Been, so like, I can let that. people know, like, hey, this is where I was, but this is where I'm at now. And the only reason I'm here now is because of Christ, because of Jesus, because of his grace, because of his love. And I want to see you be the same thing, too, because porn used to be like, for a lot of people, used to be like, only a guy thing. Like everyone be like, oh, it's only guys. But True. a lot of women struggle. A lot struggle of women struggle with well. it now. You know what I'm saying? It's just it's the culture we're in. You can't yeah, go yeah. hardly very over sexualized, very over sexualized. Yeah. TV shows, books, social media, um, you know, just like even even school in general. You know what I'm even saying? Even the like, Christian kids are dealing with this, not just non believers. Exactly. If you're a non believer watching this, every human is dealing with this issue as a kid, to be honest. Exactly. Yeah. And it just messes with your mindset. It messes with your your heart. It messes with your ability to talk to women. You know what I'm saying? Because you only hurts, see women yeah. as objects. You only see them as objects. And if you're Every looking at your wife way. like that, like how you're looking at this girl. Yeah, exactly. It's gonna hurt it, your marriage. How? Yeah, I mean, it hurts your marriage. It kills it. It kills marriage. It kills your Born marriage. Kills yeah, love. Does, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And you know the thing is, is like, how can I love God and want to love my future wife? how can I bring this into a relationship? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. When, you know, I'm with my wife or I'm with my girlfriend, you know, we're hanging out for two hours. But then as soon as I leave her, how this whole other thousands upon thousands of girlfriends in my mind and living out this fantasy. So I think that's a huge thing that people need to realize is that, um, that it's a real drug and it's a real addiction, but there is freedom in Jesus. And that's there the, is. that's the great thing. There is freedom in Christ. So. Well, I, well, I love the way you worded that. And first off, powerful testimony. Before I just want to say that, no, that really is. And what I want to point out too is, I, I don't know if I talked about this on the last one. I might just be repeating myself. But I love you what repeat, you said. Repeat, repeat, yeah, repeat. What you Encore. said. Encore. Yeah, literally though. Like what you said, like how everyone does. We, we, or you said people deal with this. Like, I mean, in Romans 7, right? I've been in the Romans recently where it's like, mm -hmm. he, he says, I do the things I don't want to do or I do things I hate. I'm paraphrasing right now. Yeah, so I do the things I hate, but the things yeah. I want to do, I don't I do. I don't do, yeah. And they, he's basically relating, like he's saying. But then in Romans 8, he's yeah. saying there's freedom. Like, there's freedom in these things. Like, so, like, really he when you're saying. question. Exactly, exactly. And I think you are focusing on that part where it's like, I love how you said you needed accountability, though. Yeah. Like, you knew you were delivered that month, like, that, at first, like, from the some certain things, but you yeah. still had these lingering effects of other stuff. 
Yeah. And it's like, you're like, I need accountability. That's what the community, the church is for. That's what the church is for. That's yeah. that's why the church shouldn't be afraid to, to openly address talk this. about this yeah. stuff and address it. Because no. there are people in the church who are struggling with this. But if we don't want to give off the wrong image, we don't want it to be known, we want to pretend like we're the perfect church or like we don't struggle with the, some of this stuff, you know what I'm saying? Then we're we're blocking some of these people's freedom because no, some people want to be set free. But of course, you're always thinking like, what will people think of me? How will, how would they perceive me? What will my wife think? What will my family think? What will my church think? You know what I'm it's saying? Like, it's and like, it's not that. Like we can be open and in, in conversation. Yeah. Like like there's so many there's so many calls to repentance of the church in the Bible. Like exactly. Why would it be there if? <laughs> We didn't. Why would it be there for us to not apply it to us? Like, where exactly. does oh, our church That's is better? The biggest thing. Like, they're they're not even that far removed from Jesus, and they're messing up immediately, like fifty hundred, like fifty to hundred years AD, right after they're messing up. So it's exactly. like if they're messing up, us being this far removed, right? We're messing up too. We're like, messing up. And we have to be able to help each other. Like, yeah, that's the and biggest thing. the fact thing. that you went to your dad, your dad, you said you went to your dad, PK, went right? My dad, said, yep, PK. The fact that you could do that is something that I don't even think we realize is a blessing as PKs, me and you sometimes. Yeah. Like, I like I like how you said that, and I don't like that you said this, but I like that you said something that I dealt with too was once you went through a church hurt, right? Mm -hmm. You You did run. Like, you ran from God. And but you have to address that part, like yeah, that did happen, and he did. came back, like he came back, like you got out of that, you know. Yeah, like, yeah, I dealt with a little bit of that too. Like, yeah, church hurt is, you equate it to God. That's the issue for us. That's young, the issue. That's the, the issue that a lot of people don't realize that we blame God for yeah. man's mistakes. You know what I'm saying? For man's man's shortcomings and stuff. You know yeah. what I'm saying? We blame God for it. I think I think for me that. That it was just like it just felt like he wasn't there for me, and that abandonment feeling, yeah, you know what sad. I'm saying? It's like it's not real because God is always there. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's a lie. It's a lie. It's a lie. A it definitely is a lie for sure. Facts. Yeah. Facts. No, that's wow. First off, wow. Also, that's also really sad that that happened in the church too. Yeah, um, I don't think people realize how common that is though. It's very common. Very it's common. very common. It's very common. And, and, and and I never had a situation like that where the it, the the church like a church member or leader hurt me, but I had friends in my school that had a lot of stories of them of them having yeah. issues, and it would be a joke almost. Like we'd laugh about it, keep it pushing while we're in sin, and then now I look back at it, I was like, wow, there was really a leader that hurt you, you know? Like, yeah, there's and, really and, somebody that took advantage of you being young. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and like that's we gotta call it as evil. Like it's evil. Like yeah, that's not it what is. it's intended to be, but it's not what God also intended that to be too. Like I we can't equate that, you know. Like, and I love I how agree. you can look at it now. First off, I think we sometimes complain about like the miracles don't happen. That's a miracle that you can even see that. Yeah. Like now, like look back and you're like, that was actually not God. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, isn't yeah, that crazy? Facts. Like, I don't know. So. Whenever and and then we go to the other thing. I like how you said about not of course not like, but how how you worded it was we covered pain like you covered up your pain by smoking. Yeah, like a whole nother thing. Like it just it's a snowball effect. It's a snowball effect. Yeah, wow. one one addiction. If you don't deal with it, or if you don't fully deal with it, it leads to another. So you may be delivered from porn or something like that. Say porn's your addiction. You end up getting delivered from it, but if you don't fix the root problem that you have in your heart or whatever and get right yeah. with God, that addiction could get broken, but it could lead to another thing. You know what I'm saying? To fix the anxiousness or depression that you feel. It could be a drug, it could be alcohol, it could be gambling, it could be overeating, just different things. And we could be a replace lot of things, yeah. one addiction with another one. With another you know addiction. And then it just stacks so, on. And it stacks on. So instead of replacing the addictions with Christ, we replace it with just something else that we think will help us or fill us, and it never does. I, I, I just, I, I love how you could, you said that you needed to pursue him more, though. Yeah. After, like, even though you knew you got saved, you wanted more. Yeah. Like you wanted, you felt like you needed accountability. I think a lot of us sometimes, too, we get saved, and then we think it's done. We think it's done. Yeah, it's like. He's it's over. He's Woo. continuing to work on you, though, fam. Yeah. Like, 
Like, wake up, bro. Like, I, I agree. I you know? agree. I, I, me and me and some of my friends, we even talk about it when it comes to like Christian rap in general. Because, like, for me, like, you know, getting the chance to make connections with people and then seeing some of these people like not really have an understanding or yeah. like they're new to the faith. And the biggest thing is like some of these people, when they start doing Christian music, they think like, oh, it's just going to be easy. And it's like, no, like, you need to be disciple too. You, do, you know what I'm saying? Do. Like, Ooh. I think I think discipleship is something that is not. To, I'm not to go deep into this or whatever, because uh, I have my own thoughts and opinions. But I think discipleship is something that is missing uh, for some Christian for some Christian artists when they when they start off and just get saved and everything. They want to immediately start making music for Jesus, and there's nothing wrong with that. But at the same time, you have to make sure you're growing deeper. You're getting discipled by a pastor, by a leader that can keep you accountable and say, okay, maybe you don't want to put these lyrics in a song. Maybe you mm. don't want to say this. Maybe you don't want to do it like this. And I know for me, there's been certain songs that I've done that I've revised or whatever before they finally dropped because I showed them to my family and they were like, hmm, maybe, mm, maybe, maybe not I like wouldn't that. say this. Maybe I would say something different. Maybe and I your would... heart was still in the right place. Right place. But you want to make sure your music aligns with scripture. You want to make sure it aligns with the word of God and God's God's voice. You know, when so. you preach, there's certain things you don't say when you preach. Like, exactly. Of course. Exactly. So like there's a standard for even Christian art. And I for agree Christian with art. The... You're I basically agree. you're basically preaching. You're preaching over beats. It's a ministry. It's a ministry. That's my it's... biggest thing for me. Like for me, like. People are like, why don't you do music full time? And I'm like, look, like for me, this is ministry over artistry. Like, I'm like, yeah, I could mm. or whatever. I could take it more serious. Like when I say more seriously, like I could be putting a lot more effort into it to go full time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But for me, my biggest uh, my biggest thing is like I, I want to be able to witness to people, minister to people and show them the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's my biggest thing. We're reaching the ends of the earth. I said this in the That's last it. We're reaching That's the it. ends of the earth reaching and we're using music to do that. I agree. And yes, it. we're artists. Yes, we're artists. And yes, yep. we're creative and we're creators. But uh, we're also uh, a a reflection of the creator. So there's yeah. a standard of that how we we're supposed to, to, that to live. We have to keep. Yeah. And and I love that you said it like that. Um, And I think some people do it differently, too. Like, so we mm -hmm. don't have to like we're not. These aren't just Christian artists we're calling out really yeah. right now. We're saying yeah. content creators as a whole, like as a whole, we, as a whole, like TikTok, TikTokers, be, like all that stuff. All yeah. that, like we just need to be careful with what yeah. we're, we're putting out because, I mean, if we're known by how we love people, <laughs> right? We want to make yeah. sure what's coming out is love, you know. I agree. And, and so I I love the way you put that. Um, and discipleship. You know, you you made a good point about how you showed your family your songs and they and they yeah. told you. I, I just had a similar situation where I I put this certain song and I won't say names, but s certain guys um in the Christian space actually reached out and were like, I don't think you should, you should word it like that. And, and and I was like, at first, you know, it's crazy. At first, I took offense. I can't lie. I was like, oh, they hate it. I was like, they hate it. Oh, they, they upset. I like, they Why they hate it? I was like, man, I'm tough. I can't lie. I was thinking the first instance, I was like, man, I'm tough. That means I'm doing good. But then I had a heart check like 20 seconds later. It didn't take too long. <laughs> I was thinking, well, I just took a little walk. And uh, I was like, why would someone bigger check me? Yeah. He, he gains nothing from that. Exactly. And I, and I realized I was like, that was out of love. And I need to have a heart check. And yeah. And they want to see you grow. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? So I took whatever I was down. It wasn't that big of a deal. It wasn't up for too long. But uh, I remember, like, I remember, I, I love the way you said that. We have to hold each other accountable. Like, that tough yeah. love. Jesus does that with Peter throughout the Bible, too. Like, he's he's holding Peter accountable. And you know what's crazy? I'm going to bring this up to note. Wow. I love the way we're, this conversation's going, to be honest. Um, even, like, let's keep it real. I'm just going to throw this. I heard this in my class the other day. And Go I don't ahead. know. It was a great comparison. It says, how many steps do you think away Peter was from being Judas? Like personality wise, he they had a strong person. Peter had a yeah. strong, good personality, but it could have been really bad if yeah. he didn't control yeah. it. Yeah, and Jesus noticed that, and he's calling him out. Like, yo, yeah. like, do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? Now do this though, if you love me. Now do this if you love me. Like, show me you love me. Like, there's yeah. more than just saying it. And and what I loved was like, that's accountability. Yeah. Like Jesus is showing accountability. Yeah, Paul does it too. Like, yeah. So it's I mean, like that's why that's why he kept 
you know, 12 disciples. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> even Jesus needed men there to be able to talk about certain things with. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and, like, yeah. I'm sure he didn't divulge, like, all his problems and stuff. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But to just have them there, you know what I'm saying? That's why even when he's in Gethsemane, his biggest thing is, like, keep watching, pray. You know what I'm saying? He's mm -hmm, like, pray mm -hmm. for me. Because yeah. he knows he's about to do what he doesn't want to do. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But he's like, I need those brothers to pray for me. And I think that's one thing that the church is missing is that huge accountability that we need, especially men, to step up in their positions and be godly men. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. a lot of churches that people go to, there's more women than men at that's the church. Percent. We've been talking about that in our class. Percentage was. Women are the ones showing up. <laughs> Women are the one; they're the yeah. ones showing up. But the way that God has designed families to be established is supposed to be God, then the man, then the women, then the children. The way that He set it up, the man is supposed to be the head of the household. household like He yeah. even says that in the Word. So it's like, men, we have to stand up and be men of the household. We have to lead. We have to lead other men. We have to lead our wives. We have to lead women. You know what I'm saying? So it's. And one girl brought up this percentage. You're right. And one girl brought up this percentage uh, in my class. She said how when the man gets saved, it's almost over 80 to 95 percent chance the family gets saved. When That's the, the woman gets saved first, it's a 20 percent chance. Because the guy is the guy isn't really looking to get saved. You know what I'm saying? Like he's like, and, ah, and I don't it doesn't mean a woman can't. Football. It doesn't mean she can't. But it's like it's hard. It's tougher. It's harder. It's harder. It's harder. It's harder. Like, it's harder. I don't it's, want to give up my my Sunday football. I don't want to give that exactly. up. Oh wow, Cowboys playing at twelve, man. We got, we gotta make sure we out by eleven thirty. Like we out, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> we and we put these sports before God. Like even my dad makes jokes. He's like, because sometimes it's tough for people in our church to worship. Sometimes, like you know, it happens. You know what I'm saying? Like you just when it comes to the things of God, a lot of times we're more like, uh, like uh, with it. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. he's like, yo, like. You were just super hyped yesterday for college football game day, Alabama, Georgia. You're like, Bulldogs. But you come into the house roll, of the hey, Lord. Hey, roll tide, though. We roll tide over here. I can't see, lie. I'm what, sorry. Like, we see, but that's what we, we get so hyped for, like, college football and sports. And but when it comes the to the things of God, we're. Man, I got to be here on Sunday, man. I had a busy day last night. Like I'm tired. It, I got to work crazy. tomorrow. You know, that's crazy, too. And, you know. I actually agree wholeheartedly with what your dad's saying. And, you know, I've heard my dad preach a little bit of a similar message to my our congregation. And not even just yeah. my dad. I've heard all the churches talk about the same issue. Look, con kind of since COVID, to be real. Yeah. Since COVID, we've seen the decline of the church. And, yeah. and, and right now, we're meeting somebody where they're at right now through this yeah. conversation. But, again, you need a community, guys. You need, you need church. Community. Like, you need you that. Need you need to need be it. at church. You need to be there. Like, that's who's your local community. You need those people to hold you accountable. I agree. And but what I love what you said about how the way we treat the church sometimes with just a lack of energy, but that lack of energy is sometimes a lack of respect for who our God. That's a big thing. A lack of like, fear for God. Yeah, like you know it's crazy. So I uh we we uh when we preach up here in classes, I take a preaching class and they're just showing us how to preach. Sometimes I you know. Whatever with with the little tips, right? <laughs> and uh, sometimes I'm asleep. You know, I'm a, I'm struggling, guys. I'm a struggling. No, student. I feel anyway. you on that one. And uh, anyway, there was something really cool where they were like, you know, you gotta dress nice, like you gotta not not stupid nice. You know, dress your congregation. That's what they were yeah, talking about. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And and me and my stubbornness, my uh, hardened heart, I said, <laughs> I'm wearing my beanie and my t-shirt till I die. I said something like that. And um, someone said next to me, they said. Isn't that what you do when, like, you play basketball? And I was like, yeah, it is what I do. That's what I'm going to do in the church, too. And he's like, where's the respect for God? Dang. So, and I remember that just called me out, dog. Like, it was, like, conviction. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> oh, you, you're getting too close, buddy. Yeah, Relax. And, like, and, and you can worship God however you want to worship God. Of course, God, of course, right? of course. But it was just, it was a, it was a check on my heart. Like, yeah. wow, when I, need, when I go into the service, I need to have this reverence for him like for god fear for him like in, in not fear if someone's asking like a fear like i'm afraid of him no like fear because i want to like respect him so much i don't want to break his heart i don't want to be separated from him like right like man that was you know when jesus is cr when praying and uh right before he dies um right before he goes on the cross 
I think that prayer, I saw a little clip talking about this too. I think that prayer that he makes isn't because he's scared to die. I think it's because he knows he'll be separated from God and yeah. that when he takes on the sins. And the way he's so like weeping hard, like like crying he, blood. It's crazy. Yeah, like it shows like we should have that same thing. Like we don't want to be separated from him. Yeah. And through those things that we struggle with, we gotta know like that separates us from him. Yeah. And like we can be free from that. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, and of course we fall. It ain't like we're gonna be perfect. I you agree. Know? But like we can't enjoy that sin like, the same way anymore. Yeah. It's different. It's, it's different, different now. It definitely is. It's different now. Wow. First off, I just love the way this combo has gone. This combo has gone so different, like how I expected. But I love this. Um, so let's go into a little music. Let's get into the okay. music. Go ahead. Go uh, ahead. That was awesome. I just love that. Thank you for sharing that too. I just want to thank. Oh you. yeah, for sure, for sure. That was awesome. Um, <laughs> so when did you start putting out Christian rap? Let's just say that. Uh, rap that honors Jesus. <laughs> well, that's all I've that's all I've ever done. Actually, I've never done okay. like secular rap. Like the first songs I ever wrote were like for fun. Um, and they were like secular, but like, I was like, I'm never going to release these or anything like yeah, that. Yeah. I never even thought of like recording them. I got into music just from freestyling with some friends and they were like, freestyle this game. Is fire. you should, you should, you should record. So I was yeah. like, all right, cool. Like I did. And this was back in late 2016. So early okay, 2017. I was about to ask that. I was about to ask that date. Yeah. So 2016. Yeah. Uh, late 2016, early 2017. So was it good at the start? Um, be for real, be for real with yourself. Be for no, real. I know, I know. There's even songs I have still on Spotify that I first released when I first started. So it's there, we can go back. There's some music from 2018. 2018 I love that. is my I love first, that. 2018 is my first ever official like drops on any platforms. Mm, I like um, that. I have been working on music, like releasing stuff because I released a couple of stuff on YouTube and it got like 400 views in like two months. So, like, for me, I'm like. I'm like going through the roof. I'm like, you oh, lit. You made it. <laughs> like going stupid, right? And then, um, I'm like, yo, this is fire. Like, this is it. And then, um, I took like a whole year away from like actually dropping anything, and uh-huh. I just kind of like worked on like what I wanted to sound like and stuff. And so when I was back in the world, like huge influences for me were like Chief Keith. Uh, Little Reese, like all Shy Rack, okay, drill rappers. Because, that drill music. Yeah, because I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Christian from the suburbs, right? So like, like they're they're living fire stuff, you it know. What I'm like saying? Like, they're living that it was like that drill life. It was definitely entertaining for me because it was like, yo, like I feel like I want to go and shoot somebody right now. You know what I'm saying? Basketball like basketball culture too. Everyone, yeah, plays Chief Keith, everyone yeah, played that, Little that's Reese how too. it felt, you know. So Dirk, all of them, yeah, yeah, Dirk. Um, before he did all melodic stuff, now that he yeah. does, but like back when he was a drill rapper, like yeah, he used to yeah. love all of them. And so I was like, yo, what if I like take that sound and bring it to like Christian? Because no one's making like drill, like Chief Keith sound and drill. Like I know people do like New York sound and drill now, of yeah, yeah, yeah. But like that shy rack sound, I was like. Nobody's doing that. I'm gonna bring that or whatever to Christian hip hop. And around that time too, I don't I don't think there was. And there might have been. We might be forgetting some. But like I don't horrible. think it was really. Horrible. It was bad. My voice is high pitch. It doesn't have that. that <laughs> yeah, it doesn't have that like like bang bang. Yeah. Bang bang. <laughs> it doesn't it doesn't have that feel. No, you know what I'm saying? You. It doesn't have that feel. Um so after doing that, I did that for like a year of like trying to do some stuff. I experimented with some stuff. Uh, 2018, 2019, I released a song. It actually got on the Spotify playlist. It did pretty good, right? Boom. I was like, cool. 2019, I was still taking music like a little seriously, but not too seriously. Um, and then I released a song. I don't know if you heard of an artist called Droop, D R U P. Um, I have to but tap in. he was uh, he was definitely he was doing like a Playboy Cardi sound before anybody mm. was ever doing a Playboy. This early 2020. This is this is 2019. So oh, if 2019. you listen, if you listen to his old discography from 2018, Droop. you said Droop. Droop, Droop. Droop. He's got a song with like Paris Chariz. Uh, gosh, he's got gosh, like, gosh. like he's got he's got some songs with some known people in CHH. Really cool dude, and he's actually in Oklahoma. Paris right here in Tulsa. Well. Paris right here yeah. in Tulsa. Yeah. And Droop's in Droop's in Oklahoma. Droop's oh, in Oklahoma. hold on, I gotta find his Insta after this. I'm gonna look. Yeah. I'm gonna find that. I'm gonna find that. He's like one of my best friends. Awesome okay, dude. Cool. Um. So um. He had did a song with me, and it was my first ever song on a Playboy Cardi beat. Never done a song on a Playboy Cardi beat before. We did it, 
and it was like the last song I was going to do for 2019. It was August. I was trying to focus on school, and I was like, I need to take a break from music. At the time, I maybe had like 2,000 monthly listeners. I was like, I got to focus wow. on school. Boom, right? So then we did the song, and it got a lot of great reviews. A lot of people were like, yo, you got to keep up with like this die lit, self-titled Playboy Cardi sound. And I was like, I don't even really know who Playboy Cardi is. I just know the type beat or whatever, right? And they were Red. like, Oh, because cause you're I not listening to that. Yeah, I don't listen to secular music. I don't. If I even get like an influence for something, because like people are like, yo, you're on that Ken Carson sound. I literally just see like a snippet that might hit on like my yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. social media or like someone will send me something. And I'll be like, that's tough. They'd be like, yo, like try to do something like this. And I'll be like, okay, <laughs> And I'll be like, all right, cool, boom. I'll do my own flows with it, and I'll be like, cool. Or that's whatever. hard. Like, so that's hard. That that's me. But like, I'm not actively listening to secular music. Like, that's not. It it doesn't sit right with me. It's not my cup of tea. So, mm. um. So yeah. So we did that like 2019. So 2020, I like rebranded. I had started a thing called Poncho Gang at the end of 2018, and I was like, I want to find a way to kind of get this to pop off. So I rebranded. I got the purple umbrella. I got the safari hat. I, I got that. Crocs. I, I started that. wearing Crocs. Like, just completely changed the whole thing up. And then I started being like, Poncho Gang, ooh, before all my songs, right? Before the song Poncho dropped. Like, okay. Yeah, it would be like, it would be coming up, and then the beat be playing, and then before the beat drops, it would be like, Poncho Gang, ooh, and then the beat would drop. And it was just like, <laughs> go like, KC is on this That's track. That's hard. That's so hard. I started doing that. And came Poncho back Gang, ooh. Like, yeah. yeah. Uh, Poncho yeah. Gang, ooh. Came yeah. back with like a Cardi sound. And, like, people started loving it. And, like, I still stay true to me, of course. But I got blessed. I had one song that I made in 2020 that went viral, like, two years later on, like, TikTok or whatever um, called What's uh, Up. And, uh, what's Up? I was yeah. just listening to that like, one. What's up, like, like, What's Up? Like, What's Up? Like, What's Up? Yeah. It went viral. And it sounds that, a lot was... like them in their style. Like, in yeah, their style. But, it like, does. It, but, like, and I'm not saying that in a disrespectful way. I mean that, like, it really allows, well, at least me, when I'm in the car and I'm turning on artists, like Christian artists, because, you know, when I'm in the car sometimes with, like, a lot of my uh, friends that aren't believers, I want, I don't, that's when I know I need Christian music. Like, yeah. So yeah. I try and throw something on that I don't want to really, them to, I just want them to, you know, like, chill. And then they get in preach to. They don't even know, exactly. though. Exactly. And then exactly. I throw on what's up. And then, you know, they're like, that's what's up. That's what's up. That's they, tough. They yeah. Like, it's so like crazy that. to me. Because, like, that song, I've had so many people that aren't even saved be like, yo, that rides. Like, they'll be cussing. They'll be like, that rides, bro. Yeah. Like, and, like that's, you know, that. but that's a pure, like, compliment, though. I've noticed that, it too. Like, people it are like, is. I... I I bleep and love your reaction videos. I'm like, yeah, man, you need to watch some more. Like, <laughs> you need to watch. Yeah. You, need, you need to wash your mouth, buddy. But, but it's love, though. Love. It's like, like you want those. Like you, at yes, the end of the day, we're the trying to reach to them. We're trying that's to reach the one you them. Want to reach. But we're also trying to disciple the the, the believer at the same the time. The believers. That's the it's biggest like a balance. Thing. It's like a balance. You have to find. That's the biggest thing. You have to find that balance because you don't want to cater so much to the worldly people that you like water down your content and your message to hit them but at the same time you're like for me my biggest thing is every single song i do i have to say the name of jesus because there's so Amen. much power in that name like there is there's demons like, demons people, are scared of that one <laughs> yeah exactly like people yeah. say god in their songs and i totally get it but there's so many people that have a god you know what i'm saying like yeah, i have yeah, a god yeah, yeah. but people there's only that one word. there's jesus. only one jesus only, only one. one you know what i'm saying and so for me, yes, it's like, Lewis kinda you, made that. you gotta, you you gotta to decide that who that is. You gotta have that Jesus. Yeah. You gotta, when you say Jesus, sorry, I, I cut you off. Mid, I'm, no, 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 you're good. When you say Jesus, people have to address him as a human being. Like, what was he? Yeah. So, and I don't know, I'm misquoting C.S. Lewis, but like, you know, the liar, lunatic, or uh, I don't know the third one. But anyway, it's yeah. like you ha they have to address what he is. Like, or Lord, liar, lunatic, or Lord, man, someone's gonna correct me in the comments. I think section. it's like that, something like that. Someone yeah. correct me, someone correct me, but like, they gotta pick which one. Yeah, like when you say him, because he was on earth, we all know he was, like, yeah. there's no denying that. So, I actually love that you emphasize putting Jesus in. And what I also like is you have a structure of having to reach multiple, not demographics, but like the, the Christian and the non believer, because even in sermons, we're taught this to pre when we preach. There's people who are believers, and then there's non-believers, and then there's someone that might not ever walk in the church again. Again, and like, exactly. The song is like someone might not ever hear a Christian song again. You're right. You're the one they're hearing. You're the one they're hearing. There's responsibility I, I, there. Yeah, 
That's like, huge responsibility uh, for me because like my my day job, like my actual, like my first job, because mm -hmm. music is like my second job. So I actually make pretty decent money doing music. And then I have a regular job where I'm a teacher. I teach 10th and 11th grade. And so mm -hmm. most of my most of my students, like I'm their first Christian rapper they've ever heard. And whoa, a lot of them. Oh, that's awesome, yes, though. And they they really. Is this a public it, school or a Christian school? This is public school. No, this is public school. Wow. So it, it, it's a blessing for me. The biggest blessing is to be able to be an example for them, not even just as a musical artist, but just in the way that I live my life, that they're able to see Christ in me. I might not be able to talk about Jesus because it is public school, yeah, but yeah, they yeah. know based on my life, based on the music that I make, based you know, on by the way, the way I you love myself. That I'm a huge believer in Jesus. That I love Jesus. You know what I'm saying? They know that. It's setting. You're planting a seed in their life. Yeah. Like. Yeah. They're curious. Like, what? Mm -hmm. Why is he so? Why is he so nice? Like, why are none of my other teachers this nice? Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah. I always hear about how people, uh, my friends from public school, talk about. I mean, I had private school teachers that weren't the best either. So like, yeah. You always hear that. Like, why is he like this? Why is he okay? But then you're curious. Wait, this guy's a good person. Yeah. Why is he a good? Why? Person? Yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean. I, mean? I I get I've gotten a few emails from um a couple of the students' parents, and like one of them was like, "Yo, um, my students look up to you, kind of like a dad. Like you're an amazing example wow, to them." Wow, that's so my, awesome. My kids were having trouble coming into school and just doing what they need to do, but you, the being the example that they are, they look up to you and they love you. Like you were the first person they talked about. When they came home from school the first day, I asked them how were their teachers, and they were like, wow, "This teacher right so here nice. is is the best." I could already tell like he's gonna pour into me, and so for me, like that's huge being able to pour wow. into them and support. Uh, my thing is like I want to be able to support a lot of their passions and things they're interested in. Be there at games, be there at events. Wow, um, like a real life them. leader there. Yeah, yeah, because some of them, some of them make music, and like it's not godly music and stuff like that, but, but like. They started doing music because of me, and they're like, "Coach, I know, oh, like, awesome. you, I, I know you might not rock with this because like some of the curse words and stuff. But, like, <laughs> I really want your opinion on it. Like, what do you think?" And I'm like, "Yo, like, y'all are flowing on this fire. Like, this yeah. is tough." I was like, "You know, I could take out some of the words or whatever, but when when it comes to y'all flowing on the beat and like actually taking this seriously, like." Y'all are doing a great job and stuff like that. And they're wow. like, man, that means the most coach. Like, I'm trying to get like you. I'm trying to get my monthly listeners and try to get my listeners and stuff up like you. And I'm That's like, so cool that they have like in people that like someone they can go to, bro. Like, yeah. so in 10th, 11th grade, bro, is such a man. I was the most lost in those years. So, like, for you to be doing that, you don't know what they're going to turn out to be. Like, you're yeah, just that's the biggest God thing. To work. Like, that's the biggest thing. Like that's so that's crazy actually. Yeah. Like, you know it's crazy too. I don't know if Delagris mentioned what, if he was a teacher or not, but he says he works with eighth graders. I think he does. That. I think he is a teacher. I think he is. He worked. He's, he mentioned that. Hey man, we on a roll right here, man. Like wow, this is awesome though. Like not just leading the youth in music, but like in the school system. In the school system, that's the biggest. That's thing That's so cool, bro. That's actually crazy, and it's encouraging too because it's like. I think teachers get a bad rap, bro. They get a bad rap growing we up. We do. Did. We do. And, 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 like, and some of us deserve it, honestly. Some they, of us and there are some bad it. ones. There are. And I <laughs> yeah. think some preachers get a bad rap, and they deserve yeah. that too. It's like, but, like, at least we know there's good. I think that's so cool. Like, we need to be encouraged by each other's testimonies. Like, Yeah, I agree. And that's so that's wild. So, back to the music. Go ahead. You're, you're making the music. I don't even know how we get on this. I'm just asking. I haven't even looked at my phone in a while. Like, I'm not even. This conversation. I told you the conversation. I told you. Conversation yeah. just flows. I told oh. you. I'll be talking a lot. My bad. I just be. No, like, this is perfect. Um, And a lot of people in love the, these types of convos, I think. Bet, I think bet, a lot cool, of good cool, things. Cool. So, anyway, let's say the music, right? So, the, mm -hmm. you've. uh, I, I, I've noticed that it's picked up. Like, a lot of the streams. Are are going up, and I say we can say that in an unselfish and an uncocky. Yeah, we know it's God working through you, right? Of course. You're a vessel, but like, let's let's talk about some of the people that uh, you've worked with. So I noticed you did a pay, a tape with Christopher Con uh, Sincere. Yep. How was that? How was that working with him? Oh my gosh! So Christopher is like one of my best friends, honestly. Really. Um, and it's so funny because me and him met back in 2021. So this was at the time. Do you do you know what next move was? 
No, I don't. Okay, so have you heard of Coop? Have you heard of Hendrick? No, bro. Oh no. man, okay. I'm really not tapped in. I'm really no, new, no, no. Bro. You're good. You're I'm good. I'm really not tapped in. You're good. You're good. So I'll give a quick backstory. Coop so, and Swayze? Huh? And yeah. Swayze? Yeah, Coop yeah, yeah. Swayze. I know who Coop is. I know so, who Coop. Because yeah, some of the guys Coop. here listen to Coop. Okay, okay. Or, yeah. or know who Coop, Coop. is. Coop. Okay, yeah. Okay, okay. And a lot of people know who Hendrick is. Hendrick is like famous. Oh, I know Hendrick is. I know Hendrick is. Uh, the it, red it's hair. Like, it's like indie music, kind of, right? It's yeah, kinda... his music now is indie. It's but it now wasn't indie. always. It was definitely not always. If you go back and listen to his older oh, stuff, Grace Hyun, that's one of his songs. Yeah, I, I heard if you that go one. back yeah, and listen yeah. to his. If you go back and listen to his older stuff, he has a lot of Juice World influence. Go back and listen really? to his older stuff from twenty twenty. Go back. Go back and listen, because me and him actually have a song together. And wow, me, him, and do you know who Geo is? Gio's another one that's definitely blown up a lot. I but me, Henrik, and Gio, we had a song together. But Henrik and Gio really cool. But yeah, all that to say, Henrik yeah, yeah. and Chris, they were all signed to a label called Next Move. And the label okay. was managed by a guy, used to be YB. I don't know if you know who 808BZ is now, but he goes by 808BZ. He's also okay. a Christian artist. But he awesome. managed them. So I had known Henrik. Me and Henrik were cool, right? And then me and Chris, like we weren't cool yet. But like I was lost. I was like, "Who's Chris Christopher?" Okay, got it. Chris, now I'm back. Say, I'm I always back. Just say Chris. I just say Chris. No, that's your dog. That's your dog. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Me, No, no, was, Chris. Like, Chris. Me and Chris, got it. me and Chris is here. We were we we weren't cool. And then he messaged me on Instagram because me, Gio, and Henrik were all hanging out. And so like he was like, "Bro, uh, hope you have a great time at the show. Hope you have a great trip." And at the time, Chris had like one thousand monthly listeners, right? Just like one or two thousand, like barely no. So then I reached back out to him. I was like, "Bro." Your last two songs, because we only had two songs that were out. I was like, bro, your last two songs, definitely fire, bro. Like, I love your work. I love the style that you do. Like, I love your music. Like, boom, right? So he's like, yo, here's my number. Like, let's just keep in touch or whatever, right? So I wasn't thinking nothing of it. I didn't think that we would become the friends that we are now, like the brothers wow. the brothers that we are now. And so then um, he was like, it was like a few couple months went by. We were still keeping a little bit in contact or whatever, right? But then we all got in this group chat. And me and Chris were like, it was like two black people in the group chat. I hate to be ready, but like two, <laughs> no, like two yeah. three black people in the group chat. Everyone else was white. And me <laughs> and Chris were having field days making <laughs> jokes. Like we were making crazy jokes in there. And so like from that group chat, me and Chris got like really, really cool. And so then he asked me, he was like, hey, he had dropped his project called The Middle. It was about to drop. Um, and this was back in 2021. And he was like, yo, can you listen to this project? I was like, bro, send it to me, right? So he sent it to me. I was like, yo, this is going to be insane. Like, this is going to change a whole lot of stuff for you, right? Sure enough, he drops the project. Everyone loves the project, right? So then I have a project that's coming up to drop in 2022. And I was like, Chris, you want to be on this song? He was like, bro, heck yeah. Like, let's do it or whatever, right? So we did the song. The song went stupid. A lot of people really liked the song. They were like, yo, you and Chris are kind of like an underrated duo. Like, y'all should do more stuff together, right? So I was like, all right, cool. Like, we'll see about it or whatever, right? So then Chris had another project he was doing. And he was like, yo, can you do some background vocals for me? And I was like, sure, man. I'll do some background vocals. Like, let's do it or whatever. Right? And keep in mind, we've known each other for over a year now. And we still have not met in person. Like, he's in Florida. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. we still haven't met in person at all, Christopher right? was in Florida. Yeah. Really? Okay. <laughs> he's in Orlando. So he's, like, near yeah. Caleb Gordon, Alex oh, Jean. Like, he's, he knows them or whatever, right? Okay, like, yeah. Like, the last concert that we did, the last time I saw him was back right before Christmas, and Alex Jean was actually at the concert that That's we lit. did or whatever, right? Like, in dude. faith. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was yeah. cool. So, so yeah. So, he's like, do the background vocals. So, I do the background vocals on the project, right? Boom. So, we're like, yo, we still haven't met or whatever, right? I'm like, I know, man. We got to meet. So, then... This guy that does clothes named Poets Claw, he shout out to Poets Claw. Cool, cool dude. Great okay. brand. If y'all are interested in clothes, go check him out. Poets Claw. Uh, send me that guy. Insta after. I'm going to need that. I'm going to need that Insta. I'm going to need that. Let me let me know all these people. I'll let you know their answers, man. Yeah, Drew, yeah, Poets Claw, that. I got you. Say uh, less. I'm going to need that. So then Chris is like, yo, bro, are you going to the concert? I'm like, yo, I'm performing too. We get to meet for the first time, right? So literally, I got off my flight. He gets off his flight in like 30 minutes. As soon as I see him... We just go, like, we just hug each other. I was like, oh, boy. like, I'm so hot, bro. Like, I'm, like, I'm lit, right? So we're like, we're like hugging each other, right? Like, people thought we were like together, like, nah, like, this is my brother, man. Like, my dog. Right? 
my dog, right? So, like, we're lit. So, we do the concert. Concert's fire. We play basketball. We're hooping. It's just great times, right? So, then, um, like, March March or April comes around, right? And, um, like I said, I'm a teacher. So, we get the summers off or whatever, right? And so... Oh, yeah. I'm not even thinking about Mark, that. I'm yeah. limited for the summer. So, two months, I'm not in school. And I'm still getting paid, too. So, I'm like, I'm like, eh. Hey, That's I'm, actually I'm lit. It. That's actually fire. It is. So, it helps me. So, like, when I do shows and stuff during the summer... I have time to actually like do a lot of this stuff and I don't have to take no time off of school or whatever. Yeah. So um he like he like texted me and um I had made a joke like months prior. I was like, bro, a lot of people said like we work well together because I got him on another project of mine in March that I dropped last March that had uh like a mosh pit rage kind of sound. And uh he actually like went stupid on it or whatever, right? Like on a mosh pit type beat, and it was tough. And oh, so wow. I was like, yo, people saying like we work really good together. We should do like an EP. Like, I'm just joking or whatever, right? And so then he was like, ha-ha, right? He's just laughing. So then like April or May hits, and he's like, bro, let's do an EP. And I was like, I was like, you for real? I was like, you for real? He's like, yes, bro. Like, let's do an EP. I was like, all right, let me know. You want me to record at my place or whatever? He's like, bro, I think we need to get together and record this, right? So I'm like, all right, you want me to come to Orlando? He's like, come to Orlando, let's do this. I'm like, all right, bet. What days work? So he's like, let's do this July, first week of July. So I'm like, all right, bet. So I'm like five hours out from Orlando. So I'm like, I'm just going to drive there. So I drove to Orlando, I right? That. I get there. You said what? You could do that easy. Yeah, yeah. five hours ain't yeah. nothing. Yeah, that's right there. That's nothing. So like, boom, I get there, right? We're all dabbing each other up. Cool, right? He's like, he's like, let's do this. Let's do this project, right? So I'm like, all right, cool. I'm like, <laughs> some of these songs are going to be tough for me because of the style of music I do. Chris is, was Chris is more lyrical. I give Chris that. When it comes to lyrics... It's different music. It's different yeah, music. Yeah, it's different different genres. Like, it's the yeah. same It's genre really different genres. Rap. I like that. But I like it. it. it There's is. sub-genres in, in rap. Like, I've noticed that, too. There's sub-genres. So, like, I get what you're saying. And he's definitely more lyrical. So, when we got there, right, we were supposed to start recording at, like, 7 or whatever, right? But they wanted to go out to eat. So, we go out to eat, right? We get back to we get back to the um apartment. It's like ten at night, right? Ten at night, <laughs> and we we have to record four songs, and on top of that, a couple of the songs we hadn't written any lyrics to, right? <laughs> so we so we're literally there. We start praying or whatever, and we're like, God, we're gonna record this tonight. We're just gonna knock this whole project out whole project, tonight, yeah. right? All four songs tonight. We were up till five o'clock in the morning, right? Oh, we recorded what? from ten p.m. to four a.m. in the morning, and then locked in the hours. studio, like locked I'm in, about locked in, locked <laughs> in. We were locked in, and it was like it was awesome. I, honestly, it was one of the best nights of my life. Um, Man, they really so much fun. I bet they really helped me. When it came, like me, I was there. He was. How there. many people were there? Was it just y'all? So it was. There was, was like it? five or there was like five or six of us. So it was me, him, another Christian artist called Great G R X X T. He's awesome. I've seen him he's too. Dope. I've seen him on Instagram, but I gotta tap yeah. him more. I think I follow yeah. him though. And he's cool with De La Cruz. They actually have a song together. Okay, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. Yeah. I def I've definitely heard him then. Yeah. So Great, he's tough. That's my dog. I love him. And then Austin Joyce, he's another Christian artist. He does like. I want to say like NF type stuff or whatever. Okay, right? I'm gonna tap into he, that too. Yep, Austin Joyce. We're getting all out. these instas after all of these. I'm gonna need. Them. I'm gonna send them all to you. <laughs> there's, there's, there's different styles for everybody. So like yeah, you might is. not like what I do, but you might like what Chris what does. They or what Austin do. does. What Greg does. If you're watching does. this, listen, yeah. hear that. Like hear yeah. that. Different yeah, roles you, in the ministry. <laughs> you might like some of these other dudes, and that is totally okay with me, just as long as the gospel is being preached. Amen. I'm okay with that. He said, um, "Uh, you, Chris, great, great Austin, Austin Joyce." Joyce and there was one of the dude called Josh. He doesn't do like CHH or whatever, but like mm -hmm. he was there. Okay. He was chilling with us and then he left. So it was like us four there and we were like up. It was late. And so then we knocked the whole thing out and we, Chris had already wrote his verse for Broken Melody. Like he had already did that, which is our, our most popular song by yeah, far for, for sure, the project for sure. because it's real, because it's so real. Um, In the moment. It talks, it talks about lust. It talks about pornography. All that. It talks yeah. about all of it. Um, and for me, I struggled writing to it because I had just did like two months before, three months before I had just did a song detailing 
my struggle and addiction and actually for the first time ever talked about being touched like inappropriately by the lady really and I made a song about it and everything um oh, wow so this so, is like it's a it's a it's a heavy song for you it's to a make. heavy song and yeah, it was yeah, like yeah. that song itself was already heavy and i was like i don't even know any lyrics i want to even put for broken melodies and so then they were like they were like casey like i need you just to trust the spirit again, like just do something. Mm, that and encouragement, so, though, like, like shout like, out there, right, right. though. Right. That, yeah, they it was we encouraged each other that night. Like it was so much fun, and so I prayed, um, uh, and it was like soon it's like boom, I had it. It took me about another thirty times to record. Though. I had to keep recording because like one of the parts was so fast. I was trying, I was trying, trying to say to get it right, and I couldn't enunciate it, and I kept having to like get it again, get it again, until we finally got it after like thirty takes. But then after we did that, it was good. That was like the third song we did. And then the last song we did was Mama Told Me, which was like the yeah. funnest song. That's like my favorite song on the project. Just I actually like Mama like, Told Me too. I like that one. Yeah, I just like it because they were like, I was like, I wrote my verse in like 10 minutes. I was like, I'm going to do a Cardi but verse. But sometimes those are the best ones. Those are the best ones. And I honestly yeah. think the verse, the verse is not even that fire, but it's just like, it's just so chill. It gives a summertime kind of vibe. I got to go back like, and listen to that one again. It just has that like. Broken Melodies sound. is stuck in my head right now, though. That's you like. It's, broken Melodies? Yeah, it's just stuck in my head. I'm just thinking about that one. Right Chris now. made that chorus that night. We made that chorus that night, like wow. literally. And he like, he started singing and he was like, what do y'all think? Because like, he didn't even. He didn't even, we didn't even come up with the name for it yet. He had, he was just making melodies. He didn't he like, know how good it was in the moment. We didn't, we didn't even, he didn't even record because he didn't even have the chorus. So he was just making melodies. He was trying stuff and he was like, and we were like, yo, this melody is fire. And we were like, you got to make something to it. Like, you got to do it now. And he was like, he was like, oh, and he was like, oh, and he was like Broken melodies. We were like broken melodies. <laughs> and we were like, this is it. This is it. And then That's like hard. He recorded it. His verse was already written. And so like for Chris, it's easier for him to write lyrics for like verses than it is for him to make choruses. For me, makes sense. I struggle. Makes... I struggle when it comes the to my verse. to my verses. Because you, you got that freestyle for the chorus. It's like you've been freestyling, so the chorus is more like you got to feel the beat, and then you're just going with the beat. Yeah, exactly. I feel that. Exactly. I feel that. Exactly. I feel what you're so saying. for me, it's easier to make choruses because, like, I'll be freestyling. I'll be like, "Yo, let me like say this line like two or three times, get it repetitive like a little bit, and then like." Boom, see about that. And so then for Chris, he's like, he's just spitting. So it's like, 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 and then what a lot of people don't know is that his verse for Ashes, which was him going crazy on that drill beat, that was all one take. Bro, what? His rep control is insane. And see, I, that's I what I was about to say. I like, I will write a whole song out, but the issue is, having it, to like, record, it, it, that all a, in one take. Like, Wow. He did that all in one take. That so, boy a rapper though. Like he a rapper. Yo, trust me, he's a dog. Like he's a <laughs> dog. He's a dog. So yeah, we did that. We only slept for two hours, right? We got up at seven because I had to go take Chris shopping. So we go to Goodwill, we get him some new clothes because we're shooting reels that day. So we gotta get ready for the reels. songs. You gotta promote it. Reels, it's a, content is important. Yeah, we gotta are have these content. the clips where y'all are outside together? Yeah, all that. All that. Damn, that feels like it was like I just saw those clips. Now I'm also late to everything, but like, wow, that's just crazy how. So yeah, we did that. Crazy. We did that. We shot. We shot. We shot content after content after content. We didn't. We didn't get back home till like 4 p.m. and we didn't eat the whole day. So we didn't eat from 10 p.m. or not. Well, sorry, 9 p.m. The night before, we didn't eat again till 4 p.m. And that was on two hours of sleep. I'm talking about when I when I tell you it was those two that days. That sounds like a movie, though. That sounds like is. a movie. It is. I could have been documented. Like <laughs> it, was, it was amazing. Those two days are some of the best memories I have, honestly. That was like, it was amazing. We had You're so much You're with your brothers fun. in Christ. Like, Yo, yeah. Most definitely. Creating. Most definitely. And, like, he... He's part of my accountability. Like, I still text him, and I'm like, hey, like, today I'm kind of struggling. Or, like, mm. dude, I'm struggling. And it and it doesn't even have to be, like, people think accountability is just pornography. It's not. It's, it's just, just like, it's I'm, everything. I'm hating on something right now. Like, I'm, yes. why, am I, why am I being like this? Or Why am I feeling I'm, jealous? Why am I upset yeah, about yeah. this person blowing up and not me? Or, yo, bro, someone came at me and said that this. One. Did I, did I, 
answer the right way. You know what I'm saying? What do you think? Or Before you've even messed up, you're just like trying to make sure you didn't mess up. Mm -hmm. Or you feel the weight of something. You're like, hey, yeah. I, this guy asked me this question. How should I answer? How should I answer it? Like so, a spiritual warrior kind of yeah, like. We're, we're, yeah, we're bros. Like we literally yeah. are. Like we're bros in Christ. So yeah, like legit. So whenever whenever he wins, I win. Whenever I win, like Amen. he wins. I like, love that. He just, and he, he and he's just been winning. Games. And you've been winning. Yeah, like legit, like of me, like I saw him, he just hit uh for the first time ever, he hit 300k I monthly saw listeners. That. Yeah. I saw and so that. for me, that's huge because that. because Broken Melodies is both of our songs together. So I have a part in him, you know, and, getting and some each other's stuff story. Like, yeah. Well, that is just so and thank you for sharing that as well, because I think people need to understand that guy like you can have fun creating for the Lord. Like, yeah, you can. Like, you can have it's fun. It's the most doing. fun. It's honestly like, the most, the most fun. The most. He's our, he, our God's a creator. Yeah. <laughs> I think people don't, like, do you like, what? Like, he's the ultimate creator. The ultimate creator. We're creating down here, like, music for to praise him. Yeah. Not just praise him, but also to relate to people. So yeah. they can get through these things. Exactly. Exactly. I agree. I agree. It's true. That's actually so wild, dog. So that those days are you consider one of your best days ever? Honestly, like that was I mean, I have so many best days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And every just, day. Yeah, every but day. Those, you're are, those were just best days. Any days that are just amazing, those were best days. Those were best days. Honestly. Like we just we had an amazing time. And then what was so funny was we came back for it. We said we were gonna drop it this day, and we did. We dropped it August the fourth. Um, I never will forget that because mm -hmm. uh, at that time I was really taking like content creation so seriously and stuff like that. Like I still take it seriously now, but at that moment, those those songs started blowing up. So like broken melodies started blowing up for Chris, and then for me, no problem started blowing up, and everyone was like. No problem. I need no problem. And you I was like, like you ain't, you ain't got no problem. <laughs> ain't got no problem. Yeah, like it was going really stupid. And so <laughs> I listened. I was Chris, listen to that one too. Me and Chris called it. Like we called it. Like when we prayed that night, we said, "God, we're giving this music for the next two months." Like the content creation, we said, "Look, we're going stupid with the content creation, and we're going to try to get our Instagrams." to get more viral for more people to get the gospel of Christ. Yeah. And during that time period, Chris went from like 8,000 followers to like over like 20,000, right? During, during like that month, just that month. And then for me, I went from 4,000 to like over 11,000 just in like that month. And it was just like continued content creation and stuff like that. Just seeing God's hand at work. I had so many, so many, when I tell you, it was like over hundreds of DMs from kids, just like I've been playing broken melodies. I've been praying no playing no problem. I really am giving up second. That's what you music. do it for. And that that was the best. Those were those were best days. Like those days were just best days. It was amazing. And like I'm not gonna lie, it was tiring because it was like a lot of work in for this. It was my first month teaching too. Like at the oh, school, so like, so like a so lot school, is happening. A lot is happening. So like, my social media is blowing up like crazy. But at the same time, I'm having to like get lesson plans and stuff ready for kids and like be introduced to these kids who Probably these kids kept are. You humble though, to too. Probably so kept it, you humble. Yeah. Oh, it most definitely does. I think. I think it most definitely does for me, especially when I first started. I thought I was gonna take like the world by storm. Like that's how we all think. Like, man, this my music. We always think our music is good, and it may be good, honestly. Um, but we, I mean, it's very tough to come into the game and immediately have thousands of people playing your music or whatever. Like it yeah, does happen yeah, yeah. for a few people, but it's very, very difficult. Our first songs, it's a struggle to even get like a hundred, you know, two hundred plays or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it is. It's that tough. first that start is hard. The start is hard, and so I used to I used to be like jealous of some of my friends because I'd be like. Man, I'm talking about Jesus and all my music and some of my friends. This is back in like 2020 though, so like it's been a while. So yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Good. But like, but like when I was first like really starting to take music seriously, I'm like, man, I'm really mentioning Jesus and I'm not getting the respect I feel like I deserve. I feel so underrated. And I'm like, all these other guys, they barely mention Jesus. They maybe say God or whatever, but they're getting thousands of streams. Like, where am I? Where's my love at and stuff like that? And so God really showed me, and it wasn't even. 
wasn't even just humbling me. He was like, who are you doing this for? Are you doing this yeah, for, yeah, yeah. for people? Are you doing this to be known? Are you doing this to blow up? Are you doing this to glorify me and for me to get the glory? Or is this all about KC? And I was like, yo, like, that John hit. Like, heart the, kick, rebuke, heart the rebuke was crazy because it was like, yeah. it was like, yo, I really had to stop doing music for like a couple months and be like, who am I really doing this for? Am I really doing this for God or am I doing this for myself, for my glory? And we just talked about that with Dela Cruz, bro. We were just saying that on the last podcast, bro. Or like, podcast. I don't even know. It's about the last interview is like, we were just saying like, how we had, you have to heart check yourself sometimes. Yeah, like, you do. Because this ma man struggles with that where we get prideful. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's not even intentionally. It's just over time, over us time. working hard for the Lord. Yeah. We, and if, if also when it's a creative aspect too, and you're doing it, it sometimes is when fans think they're, they're just complimenting you with praise. Yeah. And it's hard for you to just, you know, conceptualize like it's, it was actually God that did it's that. It's God. It's God. You know it's what God. I mean? It is. Because you are gifted too. You have yeah, a gift. Exactly. So like, I think that's just men have to deal with that. And that's good that you have accountability. Yeah. To call you out too. Like, hey, chill out. Like, remember what we did this for at the start, you know? Yeah. Like, that's awesome. No, that facts. That. Facts. My, um, the people that are part of like my poncho gang, like the OG members, is like my brother and my best friend. My best friend also makes music. He's really good. Um, he does he does a lot more melodic stuff. So like where I'm like hype and stuff like that, his stuff is way more melodic, more like Polo G Rod Wave type mm, people mm, say. Mm. So it's he's definitely fired with it. Um his name is Sedge. S okay. dot E dot J. Definitely fire guy. I need that too. Um, <laughs> I'll definitely send that up to you for sure. Um, but they keep me humble. They'll be like like, I literally showed them some of my songs as well. Like, my whole projects, anytime I release a project or whatever, I'm like, yo, what do you think about this? Is this good? Is this and You boom? need that. And like, they'll, they'll check me. They'll be like, yo, I see your numbers rising. How you doing? Like, you doing good? You still, like, Jesus. That's real. Jesus. That's real. I'm like, I'm like, yeah, we good. It's Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Like, boom. Because it's so easy, especially the day and age that we live in, it's so easy to get caught up on numbers. You know what I'm saying? Like, then my followers go up. And and have, I I struggled on. with that for early. I struggled with that, and now it's like sometimes I look and I'm like, Kev, just just glorify him, dude. Yeah, like, that's the biggest thing. That's what you gotta do. Like that's the biggest thing. My mom always makes me laugh because like she gets so excited whenever she see my numbers go up or whatever. Mine does like. too. They're so, our biggest yeah, fans. Like, that that that's how parents are. My mom and dad are like my biggest fans. Like they're huge fans. We can't we like, came out of our mom. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. Exactly. Like, wow, they, this happened. <laughs> if they're if they're, if they're good parents, they're gonna want to support. Yeah. Like, exactly. Literally. And so my mom, like one time um this was like two months ago or whatever, because during the Christmas season, if you're a music artist if you're not making Christmas music, your numbers always go down during the month of like November and December November, because December. It's, it's seasonal. It's seasonal months, and if you're not making Christmas music, your numbers go down, which is fine. I'm not really seasonal music. About it. It's it's a thing. Yeah, it's a thing. And so at one point, my number had dipped to like 48k, and so like maybe like a month before, I was at like 62k or whatever, and I went down like a month later, I was at like 48k, and so my mom was like. My mom was like, how's music doing? I was like, oh, like, just joking. Like, I wasn't, I, I'm not worried about numbers, but I was just like, I was like, oh, you know, down to 48K or whatever. And she was like, you you make it seem like it's so little. I'm like, well, so-and-so has like 500,000. You know what I'm saying? And she was yeah. like, she was like, but think about it. She was like, you have 48,000, thousand people Bam. listening Freak. a month. She was like, that's more than like some cities, you know what I'm saying? She's like, that's uh, this like, that's city incredible. I'm in right now. That's more than this one. <laughs> like my goodness, <laughs> but it's hard. You, you, we keep setting another bar. Yeah, bar, bar. I think we set keep mm -hmm. raising the bar mm -hmm. and set raising. That's better. Yeah, we keep raising the bar though because like we want to keep. We have higher. Yeah, goals. Like, you have aspirations and plans to keep growing. And you, I've heard even secular artists struggle with that because they, we at least have God. <laughs> like, yeah, we got God on our side. We yeah. good. But like for them, they don't have that. And that's why a lot of them are depressed. And they're depressed. Yeah, because it's like I made it up here. What's next? What's next? Exactly. Exactly. And, and so that that shout out your mom for for being there and telling you that in a joke yeah. you too in a joke I know it was all jokes but like that's love so no, no problem was with was that with DJ Michael V 
Shout out to No problem, too. Drop in at uh, midnight. Yeah, yo, yo, yo. That is tonight. Sheesh. That's crazy. And we're doing a reaction. So don't worry. We on that. We on that ASAP. Uh, we definitely going to do that for the channel. Um, <laughs> That's awesome, though. Uh, I got one more question before we get out of here because I don't want to take up too, too much of your time. Oh, you're and good. if y'all haven't noticed, uh, this is my mom's Zoom. So she got a Zoom at 8 o'clock. She texted me. That's <laughs> I want people to see. That's funny. Uh, anyway, um, we gotta get this question, and and I think I think this is the the, the most my favorite question because it allows you to dream a little bit. Okay. Who are three dream collaborations? Now, Oof. now, now, now. When I say dream, that doesn't mean your music is on their level. We're not saying you're just like them. We're not saying you're above them either, and you think you should be there. We're mm -hmm. saying like. Man, if you if God could somehow do this, <laughs> get you with this person on a song, who are those three people? It could be anyone. Anyone. One, my number one. Honestly, I don't even know if I have three. I think I just have one. Woo! Hold on, hold on. Yeah. Hold on. This is crazy. Hold on. Who's the one. one? I always tell people, I actually tell people this. If I could have a song with anyone in the world, it would be Hobie. Yo, yo, holy. yo, that's a big one. That's it would be bro, holy. That's it one of the holy. that's that's one of the the Mount Rushmores. That's one of the that's, goats. I just I just I love I love his heart. I think that's the biggest thing for me. Like some heart. songs no. I like more than some songs I like more than others that he does. Some songs I don't like that he does. And I mean that's just opinion. That's just you preference too. Like, yeah, like yeah, that. that's just preference. You know what I'm saying? Like I won't say I don't like, but some songs I rock with more. You like than more, others. you like some more than others. Yeah, exactly. You, you know what I'm saying? Me too, your altar. Oh my goodness! That, Boom! Man. I think I think just beautiful heart, is my favorite right now. The way that he loves Jesus, the way that he loves people, and you could tell that he does, like how evident he does. I would just love that. Would be my only dream collab, like maybe like KD or something like that. But KB honestly, the only too. one, the Holby. only one I would want is Hovey. Hovey, man, and Holby. he out there in LA, he out there in Georgia too, though. Yes, he, he is. Out he there, is. he out there. He that's is. man. That's a yo. That shout out. I, I would love to hear something like that. I wonder how that would sound too. Uh, we have two conflicting different <laughs> styles or whatever, but it it would definitely uh it would definitely be cool for sure. No, yeah. Well, uh, before you head out of here, um, can I pray for you? Can I pray go ahead. For you? I'm ready for it, man. I'm ready. I'm ready for it, man. I got yeah. got the song dropping at midnight. Yeah, got yeah, a, yeah, yeah. Got a yeah. project dropping in two. Yeah, okay, I didn't know. I was about to say I didn't want. I didn't know if that was like public. Like I didn't know we. <laughs> I hey, I got a little sneak peek though, just throwing that out there. But like, I didn't know if I was allowed to say that. I was like, hold on. I'm a, I'm gonna officially I'm officially uh it's gonna be officially announced on I believe the 11th. So I'm officially announcing it on the 11th. So that Monday before uh the 11th or the 12th, but that Monday before the 15th, gonna officially announce it. Um, that this is dropping. I'm gonna need everyone to go crazy. Um, I've been on a worship series just before we get out of here. I got to give y'all the back load. No, no, um, no, do it. No, no, no. I, I don't, no rush, no rush. Go. Been on, been on a worship series. And I remember it was something actually you said that this was my thought process behind the whole thing. So, um, you had said, look, like it doesn't matter what you wear or whatever, you can still worship God. And that was my, that was my biggest thing. So I dropped the two song EP uh, back in um, a double single back in January, I believe, called Different Worship. And I wanted it to be like, it was kind of like some Cardi sounding like old, uh, just levitating type worship where it was just yeah. focused a lot on Jesus and stuff. And then now my next project is going to be more about the deliverance that occurs with Christ. And I think that that freeing that God brings where you're able to just freely worship him in spirit and in truth, no matter what you wear. Cause like right now, like I've been wearing a lot of PJs lately. Cause that's going to be part of the aesthetic. I'm a PJ like, guy too. Like, like showing people. And like, Crocs. You said Crocs, Crocs. earlier. Really. I'm rocking PJ. with the PJs and Crocs. I'd be PJs wearing that to class Crocs. out here. So <laughs> that's what I'm saying. So I'm like, I'm like, look, it doesn't matter what you wear. As long as your heart is right. Like you said, the heart check, just make sure your heart is right. So come as you are. A lot of people think worship is just contemporary music and stuff, but man, our lifestyle is worship. Um, what we put into our bodies is worship. Uh, the music that we listen to is worship. And so I want to show people that this music that I'm making 
has that opium sound, but it's worship because it's it's about Jesus, it's from Jesus, and it's definitely lit, and it's gonna go. Sleep. <laughs> Hold on, that's crazy though. Hold on, I don't even think people realize what you just said right there. They gonna have to run that back. That opium, but it's worship though. It's worship. It's worship. Holy, it I don't think it people is. are gonna get it either. At first, they not gonna <laughs> understand. People ain't ain't really not woke, but you know woke woke to what we talking about right here. No facts, uh, facts, facts. Bro, that's you crazy. and a couple of the other people I've shown are like, yo, this is some of your best work. They're like, this it's is, heat. It's, it's a. Amazing. It's it's tough. Top to bottom, it's tough. I'm telling y'all right now, like it's tough. My cosign means nothing, but it's so tough. Like, man, nah, that's your cosign the... means everything, man. No, it no, it no, but man, that no, it's gonna be tough for when everyone hears it, they're gonna be like, okay, yeah, I know what Kev talking about. Yeah, that's fire. It is fire, fam. I can't wait for people to hear that. I've been, you know, I didn't want to say nothing. I can't lie, I played a little for my roommate in the car the other day. He said, What who's this? I said, you don't even know, bro. You don't even know. <laughs> you don't even know. Like, you don't even know. I put him on though, but like, no. Speak that I'm word gonna... on me. Dude, yeah. To my God, when I speak, he answered me. <laughs> oh, no, no, they don't even... we got... no, this is going to be a clip. This is going to get clipped. We got to throw the song in the background and everything. <laughs> one, one side. <laughs> hey, song Midnight Tonight. Well, this is going to probably be out tomorrow. So it's out now. It's out. If you're watching this, it's out right no, now. It'll be, it'll be out. At, it'll be, oh, yeah. They'll, they'll see yeah, it tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow. It'll be out. It'll, it'll be out now. If you're watching this and you made it to the end, it's out. Like, go stream that right now. And there's going to be more coming out soon. <laughs> that's what we just heard. There's more coming soon. More, com more coming out soon. on the 11th. We'll find out. We, You know what the plan is? We we should give one. This is what they're saying. We should give one. Send me something. Send me something. Say less. Let's, let's do it. Say less. Say less. Say less. That's all you hey. We locked in. We locked in. We locked in. We we got it locked in. Say less. Let's make some fun that 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 loves Jesus and talks about Christ and let's get it popping. Let's do it. Working on the conviction. Nah, I don't know. I'll see. We're doing the intro. <laughs> Full circle. <laughs> That's good. Hey, let's just pray this out, fam. Go let's, ahead. Let's give the glory to him, man. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for a wonderful conversation with a brother in Christ. Thank you for KC. Thank you for everything you've done in his life. Thank you for everything you've brought him from. Thank you for his wonderful family that he has, too. Thank you for everything, God, the yes, people Jesus. around him, too. Yes, Jesus. Continue to work in his life. Um, thank you that he could even come here and talk to me. <laughs> like, like, that's a blessing in itself. Um, where we have freedom to talk about you, Lord. Yes, Jesus. Just thank you, God. And we're going to continue worshiping you in everything we do. In Jesus' yes. name, amen. Hey, dog. Name, amen. You my dog, fam. We like Love them, you, man. bro. And we're going to cook up something. We're going we go. to. Just, we just send me up. what you got. We'll say keep less, it under wraps. Say less. Say less. Hey, I will catch. I'm Actually, I'm going to end it right here, and I'm going to okay. say, say something to you real quick. All but right. Anyway, so we'll catch y'all in the next video. Peace.